The Argon M2. Is this the best Raspberry Pi case at the moment? I think so. So this is a little bit of a different video to my normal ones that I do on about RFID hacking. Um, I thought I'd do one really, really quick one just to show you about something that I've been playing with in the background and not Raspberry Pis, everyone's been playing for Raspberry Pis for, for years and I really, really love them. I think they're really, really great. But one of the things that always annoyed me is that you end up with something that looks like this or something, obviously this is a Raspberry Pi, but a, a case that maybe encapsulates part of it, but it's not really all that useful. And because of the size of the board, you've got connectors on this side, connectors on this side, you've got your GPIO pins here, um, and then you're booting off a little um, SD card. And the SD cards are fine, but performance-wise, they're a bit rubbish. And if you're writing to them and treating these things like servers, like I do, I mean, with the Pi 4, which is a Pi 4, uh, 4 gigabyte, um, if you're writing to these things or writing to the uh, SD cards all the time, they quickly die. So what's the solution? The solution is to boot off some kind of solid state disk, or in this case, we're gonna be booting off an M2 drive. Now in the past, I've boot built these things, and what you end up with is a Raspberry Pi with some kind of heat sink device, because if it's a Pi 4, you've got to run a heat sink, um, and then basically just connecting your, uh, uh, your um, uh, hard drive sort of off the back of the USB, and it just looks a little bit rubbish, basically. You've got to have a power supply for the hard drive, a power supply for the Raspberry Pi, um, and it all just looks a bit Heath Robinson, and I don't like that. I like them to look tidy, and I like them to be purposeful. And recently I was Googling around for uh, a case, a Raspberry Pi case that had all of these functionalities in there and I came up with this one. So basically this is a Raspberry Pi case and I've been waiting for ages for this to come out. They had an Argon something else which was the same shape but doesn't have the M2 uh, um, slot on the bottom. And if you've got an original Argon, um, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, a friend of mine, uh, Nick, on uh, Twitter pointed out that you can actually buy from Argon just the base plate that allows you to put a solid state drive in your existing one. So don't fear. If you've got the older one, it seems like they got you covered and you can buy just the components you need. So what are we going to do today? Well, we've got our Raspberry Pi. Uh, we've got our case, so we're going to show putting that into here. We've got a solid state, uh, an M2 drive, M2 drive there. Uh, we've got a USB cable, which we're going to use for imaging uh, and a screwdriver. And with all of these two, ah, and this, and this is really, really important. Sorry, I almost forgot this. This is um, um, what they called uh, uh, thermal compound. Um, this is Arctic something, Arctic MX4. This was whatever Amazon could get into my hands, into my grubby um, paws quickly. Um, I really, really rate using proper thermal compound. All of these cases will come with some kind of sticky heat sink pads, um, and really you will get a lot better performance using um, a thermal paste rather than using um, um, the heat sink pads. If though you take apart your cases regularly, you may want to use the sticky pads because they're a lot less uh, messy. But if you want the best performance, use thermal paste. Anyway, I'm gonna bring this camera in a lot closer so you can see my hands. You'll still be able to hear me, but you won't be able to see me. You're just gonna see my hands doing various things. See you in a sec. So this is the new Argon M2 case. And I have to say, this is the first Argon case that I have used. So let's open it up and see what you get in the box. So let's just move some things out of the way. Okay, so um, what do we get? We get some handy dandy instruction manuals, which are quite useful, worth having a read of because they tell you where the screw positions go. Uh, but don't worry, I'm about to show you how this goes together. Really and truly, this is kind of um, self-explanatory if you know roughly what you're doing. Comes in a really nice soft plastic box. Uh, this is the uh, case, one second, just a second. Ah, uh, put that over. So it comes in two halves. And as you can see, you've got a little bag inside here which contains all of your screws and the aforementioned thermal pads, which we will not be using for this build. This is the base unit, and you can see there's an M.2 key in there, which will take different sizes of M, uh, M2 drives, which will go in there, and a USB key, a USB port at the back. Now, I don't like, and both like and don't like, the way this works. Because when these two bits of two halves of the case go together, they give you this, which is essentially two USBs, and it plugs in like so, 
and then essentially plugs into the back of the Raspberry Pi. Now, I don't like that. I would like an internal connector. But actually, this makes it very, very easy to work with. So it's kind of like a mix of both things. So this is the main board, and this piece here comes out. This is your handy dandy bit, which is really, really cool because it's got two full size HDMI, which are really, really incredibly handy, and your audio output. And then it takes these ports here and mirrors them round to the back. This is the uh, uh, the main, the top unit. You can see it has a fan, and then these two bits here, which sit on the uh, GPU and CPU. And then over here, you've got um, a jumper here, which controls the uh, behavior of the button. So whether you want it to instantaneously come on if there's a power failure, or whether you want it to come on after a few seconds, sorry, after you, only after you press the power button, um, it's up to you. Um, the default is that it only powers on when you press the power button. Uh, now, I suppose if you were running it as a server, you'd want to have it on the other side. Uh, if you don't mind it and you actually have to power on your device to get it to work, then you'll want to leave it actually kind of as it is. So for the moment, um, um, actually, I am going to move this over because this particular Raspberry Pi is going to be a server. So two and three are powered. That means that the thing will always power up the instant it gets power. Because uh, this one, this this one here actually is going to be replacing my, my one of my server boxes. So what do we do first of all? Well, there's a couple of things we need to do. First of all, we need to install the M2 drive. So we go out of its little plastic packaging. Now I don't particularly Western Digital Green. Uh, they were kind of okay. Uh, I bought this because it was cheap. These were twenty something pounds each, and I suspect that if you hunt around, you can probably get them uh, even cheaper. So here we are, here is the drive, very, very standard. You stick it in as you normally would do, grab your screwdriver. In here, you will have a selection of screws. Here's your thermal pads, which I th wouldn't use. Oh, no, actually that's your feet. There's your thermal pads, I'll put those back in there, I'm gonna get rid of them. These are actually uh, little rubber feet that go on the bottom of here, which I would suggest using. Uh, and in here somewhere, we have the little screw for the M2, ah, it's actually, spot the person who didn't do this in advance. It's actually already screwed in. So undo the screw, take the M2 drive, slot it in. Oops. Put the screw in. Now, it doesn't need to be massively tight. You do not need an impact driver to put that down. That literally is, as soon as it stops, that's it. Don't put any more pressure on it. Put that to the side. Um, now, we take our Raspberry Pi and we take our, our expansion board here. And literally, you just marry the two things together. So put in the, um, uh, the audio jack then slowly guide in the other two pieces until they're in like so. And now you can see you've got a Raspberry Pi with the extra bits all expanded around to the back. Now the next thing you do is take your, um, uh, your thermal paste. Now this is optional. You, this is just because you get a little bit better performance. Um, now if you've never used thermal paste before, be aware this stuff gets everywhere. Um, uh, it's like anti-climb paint. I imagine the similar kind of properties. Uh, you don't need a huge amount. Uh, and I know someone's going to turn around and go, you've used too much. That's okay. I don't care. Put a good dollop on each section. Get it nice and spread out. There we are. There we are. Just like not have a bridge between the two. Oh God, that's horrible stuff. Right, then you grab your, um, uh, uh, your, your Raspberry Pi. Now, this GPIO header here is gonna go into this section down here. So the easiest way of doing that, and the first time you do this, it will be an absolute bugger to do, is get it in like that, line up the ports at the back, and that one actually slipped in like a glove. The previous one I assembled did not. Now, back to your screws, this quick video, these little screws here, you'll notice that on the back up here, when these things go in, you'll notice that you've got one, two, three, four, these are the long screws, so that's gonna be that one, that one, that one, and that one, 
All the other screws inside here need the little screws. So that would be this little one here. Again, you do not need to put immense amounts of pressure on this. You just need just to nip these things up just so they have a little bit of tension on them just so the thing doesn't fall apart. I personally don't believe that these screws are even needed. I think they're just for just for sake of putting them in the box, to be honest. Uh, where's the other ones? Is that one there? I think there is one there. That is one there. And the last one goes... goes in there. So there's three of them on the expansion board and one of them on the Raspberry Pi itself. Then take your Raspberry Pi. Now, one thing we haven't done, and I should have stressed this up front is, I haven't put a, um, a, um, um, an SD card in here. Now, something it will not tell you to do in the manual, but you do need to do it, is your Raspberry Pi version four, this is only for the version four, will require um, um, booting up for the first time with a um, an SD card in here will require the firmware updating and will require USB boot turning on. So this is fine because I've already had this one booting off USB for like for the last couple of months. Um, if you haven't done that, I'll put the link to the instructions in the video uh, below. But you need to turn on USB boot. So you'll need to update the firmware to the latest version. Then you'll need to go into the Raspberry Pi configurator and validate that USB boot is set to the, uh, to, to the default. Otherwise, it won't work. So, but make sure when you put this case together that you don't leave an SD card in here. You do not need an SD card because you're going to be booting off of that lovely, lovely M2 drive that's in there. So next step, very, very simple. Screw the uh, uh, back bits on. And this is just how simple it is to assemble one of these, to put one of these together. Now, the intelligent ones amongst you will notice that I have just encased the, uh, the M2 drive and I haven't put an operating system on it. And you know what? This is where, when you want to boot off this, you would need to put this in here. So that goes in there. It doesn't really, it just takes out one USB 3, which is annoying, but you lose one USB 3. It'd be nice if it kind of had an internal uh, way to get to it but it just uses this little micro, well, sorry, this tiny USB-A to USB-A cable that just basically plugs the two things together. Now, you may have noticed that I had a USB-A to A cable sitting on the desk, sitting right here. Now, what this allows me to do is plug this in here, and now I can plug this into my laptop, and I can use Balana Etcher on my laptop to image the drive that's in here. As soon as I finished, I unplug, I replug, and boot. And that's it. That is an Argon M2 case. It's um, GPIO ports are really, really, really cool. They're labeled, they're colored underneath, they're labeled and they're colored. Uh, and they're underneath this little, little um, uh, magnetically held on uh, top bit. And that's really it. I really, really rate these cases. They are expensive. They're around 40 something euros, but they're so, so, so flexible. Wi-Fi seems to work okay, despite the fact it's an aluminium case. And this whole top part of the case is acting as a heat sink. And there's even a fan, obviously there is a fan in there as well. And the little uh, controller in here will turn the fan on if it gets above 60 degrees, if it gets above 80 degrees, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you can control that. You got your power button on the side. I changed it from being the default to always on because this is going to be a server. Um, and these are just really, really handy little devices. Thank you for watching this slightly different video for the channel showing how to uh, put this case together with a Raspberry Pi version 4. Please let me know what you think in the, uh, the comments below. Please give it a thumbs up if you kind of like it. Uh, please share this on your social media channels just because we can get as many people as possible sharing, commenting, and saying what they would like to see. And if there's a particular video that you would like to see, please stick it below or message me or just put a comment somewhere and we'll see if we can get around to making it. Until next time, have fun and uh, keep building Raspberry Pis.